Good morning, everybody. It is Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. It has taken me some time to let go of things that were so deeply rooted in my heart and bond with something new. I love the way she turned out. A thought came to me this morning. The world is so loud, it is sometimes hard to hear your own voice. I had wondered what I would do with this uh, art journal entry. You all might remember seeing it. I did the drawing and then I put a sheet of almost like tissue paper that was really fibrous over the top of it with some Mod Podge. I came back later and added some Distress ink and then brushed that over with water. And this morning when that quote or thought came to me, I felt it was perfect for this page because she is really hidden in the background of other things going on. It is Saturday morning. It is really pretty outside. It's sunny. It's cool. I've watered my plants this morning and with the quote or thought that came to me and finishing up that art journal page this morning, I felt like it was a really good time to sit down and catch up with everybody. I have been going through some type of major catharsis and I can't underscore that enough. I really don't even know where to start to tell you everything. I don't want this to turn into an hour long video. I think the first thing I'll talk about is work because I know many of you have wondered what's been going on with that. Of course, a lot of you know that I used to work at the Scrap Exchange, and I was there for about two years, one of my favorite jobs ever, but for me, it came down to a really almost an ethical, moral decision for me. I, I'm not willing to work under the current leadership there. I still appreciate the core values of why the scrap exchange was created. I love reuse, I love recycling. I still have some friends who work there. So yeah, many of you know that I left that place. Part of my tenure there at the end was complicated by COVID because the store closed and well, it closed to the public. There was a very small skeleton staff there um, I was not in that group. I had intended to be or had they had asked me to be and then just I felt safer backing out. This was in the earlier stages of COVID. I went through months of being unemployed and I was one of the applications in the North Carolina system. I never received any unemployment benefits whatsoever. So I went without income from a real job for quite a few months. Uh, my my a bit of birdsong shop and business sustained me during that time and I have a little bit of retirement from when I was at Rex Hospital so I did hospital work for years the clerical side of things now let's let's just fast forward to some recent times uh, the end of 2020 I went to work in a pharmacy and did very well I mean, so well that I think it was part of the problem. I was basically thrust into um, huge responsibility too soon. I, the panic that I felt and just, you know, let's just get down to brass tacks. I think a lot of times these chain box stores become so corporate that they lose track of the happiness and well-being of their employees. I left there. I don't regret leaving there. Um, took a little, little, little break, um, doing mostly my art while I tried to figure out what do I want to do next. And I applied at a place where I do some shopping and I love the things that, you know, on the surface, once again, I could totally agree with concepts on paper. 
Um, and I'm glad I didn't say where I worked because um, I, it was, it was, it wasn't horrendous. I loved the people I worked with. I bond with people and leaving some of these people, especially some of these young people, I it just broke my heart. I didn't want to quit. I had somewhat of a management position or a leadership position and I, I felt terrible. I did work a two week notice. It was very important to me to leave on good terms because I did care about the people. One of the reasons I'm glad I didn't say where I work is that again, it turned into just a very corporate feeling. Um, you know, it was a revolving door of employees. I think it's because the pay is not what it should be. Um, we were also robbed twice and I walked in on one of those robberies in progress. Uh, robbery is probably not the right word because there was no weapon as far as I know. Now the second one, the theft or larceny, um, who knows? And if, you know, if you were to know the name of the place, it's public knowledge because police reports were filed. So I'm not breaking any confidences, but I just felt like for my mental safety, for my physical safety, that was not working for me. So here I am. I've in the past had jobs where I spent years in a job. I was never really a job hopper in my adult years. Now I did, I did work at one place that I really loved for less than a year because um, I thought I had left the medical stuff and gone into retail, which I really love. And one day a previous coworker came through shopping. She had no idea I was working where I was working. And she said, we've been looking for you. I have the perfect job for you. And it did turn out to be amazing. I mean, the pay was spectacular. That ended up being the position that led me to Rex where I, um, where I, you know, eventually retired from. So now here I am, you know, Lord willing, and if I live long enough, four years away from being able to get Social Security, I think that's at 62, I'm 58. Um, I don't want to be out there 40 hours a week. I am so called and so driven right now to do my art. That's what I'm going to do. And I don't want something that's going to take me away from that. And yet, I do really want a steady income from somewhere. And I think it's good to have contrast in your life. Like the job that I have now, it's anywhere from 15 to 20 hours a week. The pay per hour is actually better than anything else I've done for the last year and a half. Uh, yeah, well, including including the scrap exchange. I had, really wasn't thinking about that. I will say that I'm working in food, which I never expected. Um, so many things. So what is this catharsis? Oh, so that, that word is huge right now. I got a pretty good trim on my hair. And that's really big for me. Now it's still long in the back. Let me see, but it's tapered really nicely. I don't know if you can get an idea. I guess in the past, I have felt sometimes very defined by my long hair. And that's not just something that is innately a part of having long hair. People do get attached to their long hair because they like having it. And that was a huge part of the situation for me with always having really long hair. When my fourth child was born, it was about down to my knees. Um, however, it's kind of like when you're pregnant and you're very obviously pregnant and the public, you become public property. Um, people feel like they can come up and touch your stomach. Uh, some people now ask, I don't, I think it's a little more taboo these days just to feel like you can touch someone's body like that. Um, my daughter even shared when she was pregnant with my newest grandchild that at work one day, a man came up to her and he reached out to touch her stomach. She was very uncomfortable with that. She did not know this person. She felt a very uncomfortable vibe from just his aura, you know, so she told him, you, you can't just do that. 
and something similar happens when you have really long hair. In the past, when I have trimmed my hair more than a few inches, like if I got 10 inches cut off or six inches or even, you know, 20 inches, like if your hair is down to your knees and you get it cut to your hips, that's a huge amount of hair to be taken off. When people see you, they don't, they don't even say hello. They say, oh, you got rid of your long hair. It's kind of deflating. I also understand because not everybody has hair that long and especially men, I hate to say that, but um, not long after Jason and I got together, I got a really good trim. I got probably eight inches cut off of my hair, maybe more, maybe 10 or 15. And it suddenly becomes very bouncy. It's not that it wasn't pretty and healthy before. I'm getting way sidetracked on this hair thing. But it's part of, you know, but but when I got that good haircut, I was attending one of Jason's gigs and this man who would often be at this venue, he came up to me and he said, almost disgusted, like he said, you got your hair cut off. Well, first of all, it's not your hair, you know. Uh, second, yeah, I did get some hair cut off because that is what I wanted to do. And I think now at this point in life, and that's probably been six years ago, uh, my hair did grow long again. I'm thankful that it grows fast. I was blessed with, you know, good hair genetics, I guess, from my parents. Um, but when I went to get this trim, I just had no feelings whatsoever. Like, I'm not afraid of anybody who wants to come up and say, oh, you got all your hair cut off. I'm not even going to acknowledge it. I'm not even going to say, I'm not going to say anything. Now, to my girlfriends who come up and say, oh, you got your hair cut. I love it. Or And that's what they will say. My true friends, you know, will acknowledge where I need to be right now. I still wanted long hair. My hair is still long by most standards. So that's one thing that's going on. I have jumped into this, you know, possible career in this food place, and I'm still sort of checking with my inner voice, is this the place for me for the next few years? The hours are perfect. The pay is perfect. I get a free meal every shift, which the food is amazing. It's in such a nice location. So, you know, let me tell you, I, so here's another big thing. When I went in to do my first trial shift with this place, and then I progressed from trial to now I'm in a training phase. When I went into the place and was going to work for the first time, I walked around back to go upstairs with, you know, the manager who was training me and I had to stop in my tracks. I was absolutely speechless. The staircase could have been plucked from the old house that I raised my children in, the house that has been bulldozed and put in this establishment that I'm in now. It, it is uncanny and it is unsettling and it is joyous and it is confirming. It was quite unbelievable. The, the, the look of the steps. So the staircase is probably 60 to 70 years old. The original wood is showing in the spots where there is foot traffic. So like the center of each riser like, or step is worn down to where you can see wood, beautiful old wood. And the stairs at some point had been painted gray, like a porch gray. And that's used a lot in porches, old houses, staircases. It was the same thing that was on the steps in the old house. The way the, the step comes out over the front facing part of the step, I'm telling you, I just had to stop and take a breath. And I looked at that staircase and thought, does this mean that I'm supposed to be here or does this mean run? Now, so far, everything has fallen into place and there are beautiful plants there um, in the location that it is. There, there used to be 
you know, a lot more plantings. A garden center was there. So there's part of it that really makes me feel at home. There's another part that just, it's uncomfortable enough for me to be in a new surrounding like that or a new job type that I'm still trying to figure out and listen to my inner voice. Is this the right fit for me? I don't want a job hop. I don't. But I'm also not going to endure if I can help it. And again, Lord willing, because I do believe that God has been very good, very kind to me. And I do still pray and listen for that voice. Um, you know, if I'm here to last for a few years, I want to be somewhere and be settled. So there's been a lot going on. I, some days I get up and I want so much to make a video and to come to you and show you what I'm thinking, what I'm making, what I'm doing, have a lot of items for the shop, and I feel so frozen. I feel the brain fog that everybody's been talking about in the world. Part of that is probably COVID, and that many of us have been basically unplugged from our normal day-to-day -day actions. You know, we're not in the same situations. In the jobs that I've had recently, I have to wear a mask. I've been lectured and basically, uh, as we say in the South, blessed out by people who don't agree with wearing masks and they don't want to wear one, yet they want to be in an establishment where one of our mandates is that you have to have a mask on. You know, if somebody has a medical thing, that's establishments will work with that. But when you come in angry with an agenda, and without even saying which side I'm, you know, leaning towards, it's a business thing. I have to wear one because I'm working there. You know, there's just been a lot going on, and I think that's caused brain fog for a lot of us. Another huge cathartic event in my life has been so wonderfully that my dreams have returned. I used to be a very vivid dreamer and I'm a deep sleeper. I've always loved to sleep. Um, and I, like I, when I got up in the morning, I worked all day, I worked really hard. Now I would take a nap in the afternoons if I was able to, when the kids were really young, that was impossible most of the time. But when they got to be teenagers, I did not feel guilty about taking a nap, especially because I was in an abusive situation. I think if I had stayed in that situation, I might not be here. My health was declining. I developed an autoimmune situation involving my thyroid. And look where your thyroid is. It has to do with your, your throat, your voice. And I feel like so many years I lived just quieted, covering things up, not being able to speak up. You know, for one thing, the religious side of things where you know, charity covers a multitude of sins. Part of charity is not exposing other people. Um, but there is a line to everything. Um, it's kind of like if I were to sit here and tell my story, things that I really did live through, things that really happened, it would involve me telling you about things that other people did. And where do you draw the line? At what point is a person prohibited from speaking their truth because it's going to expose something somebody else did? You know, that's a huge question to me right now. And I still, I, I worry about my throat. I don't know. I always feel like that's a vulnerability for me because just because I feel like I've been silenced in so many ways. My art was a way to speak. It was a place that I could write the words, paint the pictures. Um, and you know, I remember a time I had painted a painting of a girl appearing out of a dark wooded area and she had a basket of mushrooms and we had a visitor in our home. It was a religious visit and I'm um, not condemning that at all. We, we really enjoyed those visits, but I did feel in the spotlight for having that, that painting. That painting was a part of my voice. And without this person knowing everything that was going on behind closed doors, they said, 
you know, this looks really dark. Um, I like your other ones better. And that to me felt really personal. I didn't take it personally. I really didn't. It didn't make me feel any kind of um, anger or malice towards the person, but within myself, it, it did feel again, like an instance where, you know, I was prohibited from speaking certain things or doing certain things or saying certain things. And to this day, there are a lot of people in my life who have no idea some of the things that I lived through. Um, could it have been worse? Yes, it could have been much worse. Was I really blessed? Yes, I was very blessed in many, many ways. I love my babies. I love the memories that I have, the garden, the creatures, the years that we homeschooled. But there was a true, true, dark, morbid thread that ran throughout that entire tapestry of 23 years of life. But the dreams being back. So I always dreamed vivid dreams. At times I've kept a dream journal. I want to start doing that again because my dreams have come back and I'm remembering big pieces of my dreams. There was always a bear nightmare that has returned and I don't know why, but it's changed a little bit. The bear nightmare has changed from what it was in the old house. Still can't figure out what it is. My daughter is always in that dream. And that the bear nightmare is going to have to be for a totally different video. Um, it's intense. It is terrifying. It is dark. It is very, very real. It feels so real. And the whole, the whole thing always plays out and it's always the same. And the panic that I wake up with is so real. I used to wake up just, you know, just sitting up in a dark room in a panic. I mean, my husband would wake up too and he would have to say, it's okay. It's okay. You know, you're all right. So yeah, my dreams have returned and that's really cathartic. It's, there's something going on right now that is just wonderful. It's scary. Um, you know, and I will say too, having a journal published, is huge. I felt so little and so insignificant and so unnoticed uh, 15, 20 years ago. I was lost in a place where the happiness could have been, you know, at a, at a level of 100, but it was constantly being like stomped on by this anger. So it's hard to describe but I went from feeling so little and then around, I guess, 2008, 2009, finding this voice in art and beginning to really make things. I've always been artistic. I've always loved to sew. I've always journaled. I've always written things down. I've always liked eclectic, funky, different, um, bohemian. But for the first time, I really started to make things and put my name on those things. And I would look at art magazines and think, wow, these people are amazing. If I could ever do anything like that. And then suddenly here in La Chiron, I think about saying, you saying this is your year. Um, I'm not saying this is my year. And, you know, none of us know what's going to happen from one day to the next. Life is constantly in a balance in this existence that we have, but I do feel a huge shift in my entire being. Anyway, that's where I have been. I've been busy with changes, uh, changes in jobs, and while I was working the two week notice at one place, I was getting calls about other applications that I had floating around out there. And I actually worked the trial shift where I am now in the middle of the notice that I was working at the other place. So I don't want you to think that I was just, you know, frozen in headlights somewhere. I've also been really busy. And then, let's see, was it last weekend? 
there was one day um, that I had really planned to just jump in here and get caught up. And one of my sons was in a really bad car accident. Now he is fine. Thank God he is fine. But let me tell you, he and the other two people in the car are so lucky to be alive. Um, I went back to the scene of the accident with him to just, we took some pictures and he wasn't driving. Uh, the, the person driving just, I think, underestimated her speed and overestimated her ability to handle a curve. So let's just suffice it to say that they went airborne and hit a building really hard. So they're all lucky. They are all so fortunate, so blessed, so lucky, however you want to put it, to be alive. But that day, and I don't regret going with my son at all. I mean, to spend the day with him, even though it was under those circumstances, um, that took a day. So every day has been very busy. And then when I get a chunk of time, those chunks of time, I have felt a little bit frozen. Like, I don't, should I do this or should I do this? Um, we're doing some um, just major clean outs in the house as well. I've already shared that we want to get married this year. Um, there's just a lot taking place this year. I have a doctor's appointment coming up soon just to check some things out. Uh, just a lot. I feel big changes. Part of it's probably my age. Um, part of it is just an awakening to, well, and maybe part of it is, is just a healing. I've been through a lot and, you know, it's, there are days and I've had friends say, I just, I wish you could be happy. I am happy. I want you to know I am so happy, but I am not, I'm not just composed of the things that have happened to me in the last seven years. I'm a mixture of everything that has happened to me and around me since the day I was born way back in San Antonio, Texas into a military family to a dad who did two tours in Vietnam. I've been through a lot um, and he went through even more. But, you know, we all have our stories and the stories start from the minute we're born, from the very minute that we appear. I was very loved. My parents were wonderful. Um, anyway, I'm happy. I'm very happy. I just have days where I have to stop and talk to myself and remind myself that I made the best decisions at the time, armed with the knowledge that I had in the moment and whatever instinctual survival mechanism was kicking in. Um, I made the decision I had to make in the moment. I never, ever, um, you know, my children have been at the forefront of my mind and the deepest rooted beings in my heart most of my life. And I wouldn't trade that for anything. That's just the best, the best. And I love the example that Jason has been for them. You know, even though they're older, it has been very, very good for them to see how a person should treat their mate. The confidence, the companionship, the friendship, the kindness, the, um, the provision, just everything. And it's a two-way, you know, me to him as well. But I know I need to wrap this up. I just wanted everybody to know where I've been. Not sure about this latest job. Uh, I'm, I'm really not. I have a very unsettled feeling about it. And I'm trying to tease apart all of these emotions, whether or not it's fear or just dread or just the wrong fit or just what it is. But there are so many things about this job that are perfect. Um, but that still doesn't make it an entirely perfect fit. <sighs> I've thought about, you know, really just jumping into my art full time. I have visited the idea of Patreon 
and really putting some things out there, content that, you know, would be a subscription type service. That would be something that would build over time. Um, I have never felt like I should get on here and ask for, uh, how do I put it? It wouldn't be handouts like, you know, pay me, pay me. I don't feel like that. I've always felt like I should work for what I get. And there is such a wonderful community on this channel that have really supported me and helped me through building this channel and my website and my Etsy shop. I've just really been evaluating, is it time to make the leap to a bit of birdsong being my job, that being that sole career, you know, diving in, making it number one, setting my hours, and really putting myself out there with advertising, with Patreon, with a full shop. I don't know. I'm open to feedback. I will say that. So I think I'm going to close this video for now. I can't think of anything else to share except that um, I am getting all orders out. I, fast shipping is so important to me. It really is. And lately it has felt like I'm just, I don't know where the days go. They're like smoke. I mean, I wake up and then poof, it is bedtime. I don't feel like I've gotten everything done I need to do every every day. Um, I'm learning this new job. I'm We're making changes in the house. You know, everything. Oh, I, I need to show you. Uh, we got a couple of lamps recently that are so cool because they're the glass jar type base with a cork sort of um, mechanism that fits in. The, the entire electrical part is on the top. So you've got the bulb the cord, and it looks like a cork that fits into the jar. The jar is a wide mouth, so the, the piece that fits in is pretty, it has got a pretty good diameter. Um, but we're filling these things up with pieces, stones, glass, things that we have found ev everywhere from the yard to my mom's house to walks on the Eno River when I pick up my glass and little bits of dishes and stuff and pieces of metal. There's even the sole of a shoe in mine. So, it, you know, sometimes things have to sit before you know what you're going to do with them, but I love my lamp. I'll definitely show you that at the end of this video. So I'm going to go. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening to all of this rambling. I hope this sheds some light on where I've been, what I've been going through. Um, I would love your feedback on how you feel about the whole idea of Patreon versus a shop. I know Patreon is a slow building thing. I thought about having a, a level where I send out a letter to all of those patrons, uh, where you would receive a, whether it's a digital or written and then copied letter from a bit of birdsong with maybe, it would be a certain number of pieces of ephemera because it would have to be able to run through the postage thing. That would be at a certain level, like maybe, you know, $5 a month, or I don't know, I haven't looked at the logistics on that. And then maybe a level for video patrons where I do content and digitals that you can just, you know, I have a lot of old things that I need to scan and get out there for, for people to use. I just, I don't, I don't know. I'm not afraid to say I don't know. I don't know right now. And like my journal page said today, sometimes the world is so loud, it, it's hard for us to hear our own voices. And it's really important to hear your own voice. And it's not just the world that can be loud. Constraints of family dynamics, religious beliefs, um, very strong personalities in your life, in your social structure, all of those things can cause you to not listen to your own voice. And that's that can be, sometimes that's a good thing. 
you know, there have been times I have two children who are pretty quiet and two who are pretty headstrong. You know, it's been, it's been good sometimes for me to be able to say to them, don't speak yet, you know, wait, calm down. And I have to do that. We all have to do that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, being at the bottom of a well and needing to scream for help and somebody's pouring water in on top of you and saying, don't say anything, don't say anything. That's the kind of situation that I think is dangerous for our spirits, for our mental health. And, you know, the other voices, it can be other channels. It can be other artists. It can be standards that you've set for yourself based on what? Based on where? What somebody else is doing? What you think you should be doing? Right now, I'm at a glorious point where I'm trying to listen to what I should be doing. Making what I want to make putting out there the things that I would use, the things that make me happy. Um, am I at that point? That's the big question. That is the really big question. I need to be brave enough to tell employers, whoever, this is what I can do. And if this works for you, it works for me. But not just being quiet because I've had a habit of being quiet and allowing other things to to tread upon um, things that were vital maybe to my health, my well-being, my soul, my spirit. Um, you know, being able to speak while still being respectful to the world around you, this is what I can do. And if it's not, if it doesn't work for you, then it can't work at all right now. And thank you, you know, uh, but no thank you. <laughs> So that's where I am. And again, thank you for listening if you're still hanging around at this point. Um, I've really enjoyed my coffee and I'm ready to get started in here and get some things done. Cleaning out, purging is cathartic. I'm just so happy right now. So I will talk to you all really soon. Um, sending love and prayers and blessings just truly from the heart. To those of you who are struggling with things, um, you know, I love you all. Thank you for being here, and I will see you really soon. Bye for now.